Okay, we're going to look at section B of paper two, and in particular the pseudocode question, which is usually the first question um, which appears in section B of paper two. So, um, again, IGCSE Computer Science, for those who have forgotten where we are. Okay, so I've taken a question here from the February March 2020 paper, paper two, and it's given as it's probably the most difficult of questions I've seen in terms of pseudocode. Um, but don't let that put you off. We're, we're, we're going to go through it and, and explain it to you. But first of all, what I want to do for this first part in this presentation is, is go through and maybe explain a little bit more in more detail um, some differences between pseudocode and, and the actual Python code. Okay? So, we've been given an algorithm, and it's written in pseudocode down here. Okay? It looks very similar to Python. But you've got words like repeat and repeat and then and various other bits and bobs. So, and you've got these arrows in as well, which I'll explain to you in a second. Um, an algorithm has been written in pseudocode to input 50 numbers. Positive numbers are stored in the array, pos number, and we've got square brackets, so it must be a list. Yeah. Negative numbers are stored in the array, neg num. Okay. So what, basically what that means is every time a user inputs a number, if it's a positive number, and it will put that number into this list here. Okay, so if a, if a user inputs 50 numbers, which are all positive, all those numbers will appear inside this number list. Okay, um, and same for negative numbers. Negative numbers are stored in the uh, array neg num, as you can see there. Now, the zero should not be included, so zero is not included in the positive or the negative counts. We're going to assign the value zero to the variable count. Okay, so it's going to count from zero all the way up to 50. So count until count is greater than or equal to 50 down here. Okay, we're also going to set um, our positive count, the number of um, positive numbers that have been inputted to zero by using count, because count is set at zero, and then we're going to use the um, we're going to set the negative number, the negative count, to zero to using count. Okay? So everything's set to zero at the beginning. Then we've got a little loop in here, the, basically the, the biggest part of the program. Um, we're going to do a loop that repeats. Yeah, We now have a loop that's in the code that's going to repeat until the count yeah, at the bottom until the count is greater than or equal to 50. So basically it's going to count up to 50. Okay. Every time a person enters a number, it's going to do one of two things, and then it's going to keep doing that, keep asking the user to input a number. Yeah, it's going to keep asking the user to input a number until that count has reached 50. Um, but what's it going to do with that number? It's going to split it into two different places. It's going to put it in two different places. So if the number is greater than zero, so it's a, it's, a, it's a positive number, it's going to add a one yeah, to the positive count. It's going to say another number has been entered that's positive. Okay. It's also going to put whatever number has been entered, i.e. if somebody's entered the number 50, it will put that number 50 in the pos number, okay, in the, this list here. Okay, it's going to put, here we go, it's assigning it again, it's going to assign that number into that. But, we've got an else here, if the number, um, it says here, if the number is greater than zero, do that. If the number is, is zero or less than zero, then it's going to do this. It's going to put a number in the, um, the neg count. It's going to add a number to the neg count, and it's going to put a number inside the neg num list. Okay, so that's just explaining a little bit more. Adding a number to the pos count, yeah, adding it to total it up, and then adding that particular number to the pos count, and the same there. Now this, you may have spotted the problem here, but we're going to come back to that. Um, we've got the, uh, sorry, let's go back. We've got the, we're adding one on every time, as I said at the beginning. So every time it goes through this repeat, adds a 1 to the count, and it's going to do that until that count reaches, well, it should just 
until it reaches 50, until it equals 50, where it says here, until it's greater than or equal to 50. Okay, once it's done all that, um, once it's reached 50, then it's going to output how many, no, what the number is in POS count. So it's going to tell us there are, my low minimums in POS count, so there are um, 35 positive numbers, and there are 15 negative numbers. Okay, for example. Okay, and that's how that would work. Okay, that's how that code would work. But there is a problem in it, and I don't know whether you've spotted it yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the, um, I'm going to get the exam question, the exam paper, and we're going to see how best it is to get these eight marks. Okay, thank you. Okay, now there's many ways of doing this, um, but I'm going to try and stick with the easiest and the one which I think will, um, would be, would benefit the exam. The important bit, if I can highlight, is this. Okay, the important bit is that. Um, zeros are not included. So we've got the um, we've got the code. And we've been through the code. Describe the error in the pseudocode and write the correction for this error or above. So um, the user inputs the number. If the number is greater than zero, then do this. Okay. Then add one to the positive count. Yeah and add whatever number has been entered, whatever number above zero that's been entered into this um, list here called POS count. Now the problem with this, that is, if a person um, enters zero, because it, this, it will drop into this next bit, the else bit. So if a, num if a person enters any negative numbers or zero, it will go into here. Now, what this question is saying is zeros are not included in the positive and negative count. So the error is um, if number is greater than zero, um, this would mean mean that any zeros entered would be stored in neg num and added to the neg count. Okay, so that's a problem. Okay, so how we could correct this? Well, we've got the if statement here. We've got if the number is greater than zero, do this, else do this. Now we could look at using um, ifs, elifs, and elses. But in this case, I'm simply going to get rid of the else. Okay. Um, start that. And in the correction, I'm going to put if number. Yeah. Um, is less than zero. Do that. Okay. So that should give the answer. So if number is less than zero, then... etc etc yeah so that should be that should answer that question and um, it's a horrid question um, when you look back on previous past papers and see how easy this this section is it's a bit of a I don't like it because um, in the syllabus and as a teacher we don't teach there to be two if statements inside this but and I wouldn't do it necessarily do it this way. But I've checked the mark scheme, and this is what it is almost what it's asking for to use two if statements in this repeat. If number is greater than zero, do this. If number is less than zero, do this. Okay, so that would answer that question. This is probably the most tricky. I would say this, this if you can do this and you, and you can see, and, and this is clear to you, this is probably the, one of the easiest. Sorry, one of the most difficult questions 
in the pseudocode section of section B. So good luck with that. I'm going to pause the video there and then I'm going to move on to section B to B. Okay, for 2B, um, we need to change the algorithm. I've put the algorithm in so you can see it. Um, we need to change it now. So rather than it counting up to 50, as it did before, um, we want it to um, stop. We want it to continue to go on and on and on and on so the person can enter and enter and enter and enter numbers while the number that's been entered isn't 9999. So let me read this to you. The algorithm needs to be changed so there is no limit to how many numbers can be input. When the number 9999 is input, the algorithm stops more numbers being inputted and outputs the results. Okay? The number 9999 is not to be stored nor counted as a positive number. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. Um, it would drop out anyway as soon as that's entered if you used a specific loop. So, if that's the case, if that's the case, um, we shouldn't need count, okay? Um, because counting, this, the counter is set to count up to, and if we go from there down to here, sorry, until down to here, yeah, and this bit, um, the count is set to zero, and it will stop when the count gets to 50. Okay, repeat until the count gets to 50. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get rid of that, get rid of count, and I'm going to set my page count to zero, and I'm going to set my neg count to zero. Okay, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this as it is. Okay, um, I've got to bear in mind that I've changed this already. The if and I'll, I'll put you the full question in the full my full response in a second. But what I can do now is go repeat until get rid of that until number yeah the input number. Um, until the input number equals, yeah, nine, 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 nine. So we don't need to worry about that. As therefore, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so we can get rid of that. We get rid of that bit. So um, we've set both of those to zero, and we do that, and we put in the change that we made in the previous instance. For example. If I was to bring this in, let's see if you can see this. Okay, so I've taken out. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, I've taken out the um, the count. I've set the positive count to zero, the negative count to zero. I've got my repeat in. Um, input the number. If the number is greater than zero, then run this little sub program. Um, I've ended the if there. If the number is greater than zero, yeah, then add to the neg count and if and repeat, yeah, because we're in here, repeat until the number is nine nine nine. The outputs stay the same. So the only real changes I've made is removing the count, yeah, and changing the repeat to um, not stop at fifty, but to go until the number value, the variable number equals 9999. So we'll continue and repeat and repeat and repeat until that number has been entered. Okay, that's the easiest way of doing it. Okay, but, and again, if you read the mark scheme for this one, they like to use, um, and I think it's a very good way of doing it, use a while loop. So what we can do here, we can take the input the number outside of the loop, first of all, so we set our pos count to zero again. We set our neg count to zero. So there's no num nothing's been counted yet. Um, we input the number. Now while this number is greater than, sorry, is less than or greater than 9999, what we could do as well, we could say is not equals to 9999. So it could be while number is not equal to 9999, yeah, do if number is greater than zero, the code. If number is less than zero, the code. Just notice that I've not put in my um, 
end ifs, but don't worry about that. Um, and then we've got, so we've, for the for while loop in pseudocode, we put while, we'd have the, condi we'd have the, um, the condition, um, do this, yeah, while, while this is going on, yeah, while this is happening, do this, and then end the while loop there. So we could change it in that respect, we could turn this into a while loop, okay? But that would answer the question, okay? You're basically getting rid of the count, you don't need it, and you're doing it, you can, you're doing it a condition whereby while the number or is less than or is, is less than or greater than this number, then continue with the loop. Okay? And that's as simple as that. So that's for the what the example would, would rather say, the while loop. Um, but that does basically just the same as well. Let's get that in for you. Okay. Remove the count, change the repeat until, yeah, and we've got the what we did from the for previous task. I've put, I've rewritten the code. Now it does say explain how you would in the question. It says explain how you would change the algorithm. So you can write little bits of this. You don't. You could, you could write it out all the way, highlight it, and add bits to it. But that's entirely up to you. I've done it by rewriting because I thought it'd be it would help in terms of you learning this how to do or what I would change in terms of the pseudocode. Okay, we will do some other ones and I'll show you the difference between questions year on year and uh, I think you'll be quite interested in that. Okay, but for now, thank you.